It's Wednesday, February twenty yeah. third, two thousand twenty two. We missed the two 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 by one. Two two two. Did you do anything special for two 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 two? I didn't. Okay. Is there well, something? Let's talk about it later. Okay. Because uh, we got a lot to talk about and on the show. We do. So much. Uh, gosh, district basketball tournament. There's like all kinds of stuff happening there. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about that, and mm-hmm. you know, it's covered. Cable Ten has it covered. Uh, gosh, we've got a lot of uh, news happening, mm-hmm. things happening uh, in our city government, county government, parks. Uh, it's wearing me out. <laughs> Are you already? You, we I'm already on, so we're 40 out. seconds in and you're already. I okay. know. Right, but it's well, so much to talk about. Let's, let's step aside for the open. You take a deep breath. We'll come back and okay. get it going right after this. Round 10 is brought to you by the Frankfurt Plant Board with support from Exit Realty Crutcher Agents Tim and Rebecca Hubbard. Real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. And Agent Reba Howe, navigating today's real estate market to serve your needs. Back after it here on a Wednesday edition of Around 10. Is this I'm the last Wednesday of February? RV Couch. It is because there's only 28 days. Oh, that's in right. February. Okay. Um, so next week when we're here, it's going to be March, and we're going to be like, I remember when we were talking about October. I remember when it was 2020. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, we got a big show today, Kathy. Yeah. I haven't seen seen you in a while. I feel like uh, we were out of town this weekend. And oh, yeah. You took a trip. Back. It, was, it was a fun, uh, we had a fun weekend. Not Good. such a fun trip back. Driving with a sick kid is just not fun. There's mm. like very little that I like yeah. less than that. It I can't just imagine. Hard. He was a trooper though. We made it back. And happy yeah. to be back home. That's good. And he's feeling better? He is feeling better. Good. Yep. So um, Awesome. Yep. Uh so like you said, we got uh we got big stuff happening around town. We got game of the week coming up. Or not game of the week. I mean game of the week happening. Basically it's games basically, of the game all week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Games of all week. Right. District tournament happening down at the at the uh would say spanky new, but just you know, uh, the refurbished. Okay, FD Wilkinson Gymnasium, <laughs> uh, and like you said, we got lots of local news to cover too. Yeah. Um, how are things in your world? You're feeling good. good? Everything's feeling good? good. Did you celebrate the two 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 two? It was also Taco Tuesday. And there was and so much happening, and I'm on my. Day. I'm just, I'm in the depths of my clean eating right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was two 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 two. And then it was like two 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 Taco Tuesday slash Margarita Day, mm-hmm. which is like totally give, my wheelhouse. Give me, give me all of that. I, I mean, I'm just like, things. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just put on and, the blonders yesterday, mm. and I was like, no, nah, I cannot celebrate anything. Yeah. I mean, and at school they were doing two 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 stuff where the kids could wear tutus oh, and uh, tube socks. Okay. <laughs> and uh, different like two 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 stuff. My kid doesn't do that. She's mm. like, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wish she would. But I'm I sorry. Would have. I'm sorry you didn't get to do tacos and margaritas. Should we talk about them? Would that make you feel better? There's no. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's greater purpose in my life besides tacos. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, um, we, like I said, we got we got stuff to cover today. So um, it's been the weather has been interesting. Rained a lot yesterday. Yesterday was just a drag, man. Yeah. And it's been cold, but then it kind of warms up a little bit, but then it's just always yeah. cold in the morning. Yeah. We're getting there. Like you said, it's, next week we'll be in March. We'll be in we March, talk. and that means that like we're spring right is like there. creeping in. I feel like to me that is the line. When you get yeah. out of February into March, even though yeah. you're still going to get some cold. Yeah. February, I feel like, is always like, really, feels like it's always the coldest and yeah. snowiest month for us. Yeah. And so once you get out of February, you're maybe out of that stuff. Keeneland's yeah. right around the corner. Uh-huh. Normal times, the baseball's right around the corner. Maybe not this Daylight. Year. Daylight. <laughs> Sooner. Yes. So uh, I'm ready for it. But well, um, let's hear what uh, Dylan Goodday has in store for okay. us. He'll tell us what's happening here as far as the weather goes in Franklin County uh, over the next few days. So uh, let's hear what he has. Okay. 
Good morning to our friends in Franklin County watching us on Around 10. I'm ABC 36 Storm Team Meteorologist Dylan Goday with look at your weather headlines on this Wednesday morning. Colder temperatures on the way today. We've seen that cold front move through last night and that's giving us temperatures around uh, to below average for your day today. We are tracking more heavy rain on the way. That's late tonight, but we will also have a brief period of wintry mix and a freezing rain possible there as well. As you look at your average conditions for this time of the year. Average high is 50. We're going to be below that today here in Frankfurt. Average low 30. Didn't quite reach that here this morning. Sunset is at 627. As you look at your forecast for today, mainly cloudy with a late evening wintry mix and rain chance that we'll be tracking for you. Southern Kentucky could be dealing with some flooding. Likely not enough rain here in the Frankfurt area to be dealing with that. But tonight we could have a brief period of freezing drizzle during the late night hours and early morning hours there for your day tomorrow. We're going to be tracking that closely for you. So stay tuned to our social media pages, ABC 36 Facebook page, especially for updates on that. As you head throughout your day today, six o'clock, notice any chance of a wintry mix or freezing drizzle is towards our west and into the overnight. We're going to see some rain showers mainly south of town and south of I-64, but notice this is Thursday morning, 7 a.m. There is some pink showing up on future cast, but temperatures are hovering right around that freezing mark. We'll be watching a, a light chance of that freezing drizzle. Then in the evening, we're going to see the heavier rain moving in, and that's going to continue into the overnight hours, eventually pushing off to eastern Kentucky by the time Friday morning rolls around. Here's a quick look at that seven day forecast. We're tracking the chance of heavy rain in that winter mix on Thursday morning mix possible Friday. Then we're cold heading into your weekend. Well, it looks like February is hanging on with it. I don't know. I'm, I came to work without a coat today. I didn't <laughs> even wear a coat. But then again, I've been sitting here with a fan blowing on me too. It's like, <gasps> yeah, it looks like um, yeah, it looks like some yucky weather ahead. For eh. us. No, hopefully not like, you know, terrible, catastrophic type stuff, but just kind of yucky, cold and, and rainy. So be careful out there. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen when, you know, they do these little bits or maybe you see them on like Instagram or TikTok or the people that are on news shows in the morning mm -hmm. that have to wake up at like three? Yeah. Could you ever do that? I mean, we were, you know, we were all in here. We start around 10. Yeah. You know, and Around we, 10. And we show up a little <laughs> bit before 10. Yeah. And uh, so you some know, of us sooner than others. Uh huh. Yeah. Some days, others <laughs> not. Um, but what about, could you see yourself doing that? Like where you're, you know, you're waking up at two or three to get in there by, you know, five to start following your Yeah. You, okay. you don't think I could? No, no. Okay. I don't think I could. Oh. <laughs> so no, I could. If, if yeah. that was my routine, yeah. I'd probably be into it. Okay. Because you're up, I like being up at a time when nobody else is up. And there I, is that. I, I kind of feel like, hey, yeah. I rule the world. Right. <laughs> no, that's definitely, yeah. there is definitely value to that. I, I mean, it, it would be, it would be an adjustment, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think I could do it. But I feel like then, so if you're waking up at like three, then you got to go to bed at what, six? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so where are I the could, drawbacks I here is what you're lay saying. Lay down, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then you get, you know, then you're home when the, when the kid kid gets home you get you know lots of time there and yeah just to go into bed at daylight uh, just is uh, be hard i think i would probably just operate on less sleep okay well we appreciate what, what dylan and all the other folks that do that you know yeah, we, we like to see, it's nice that they're up and bright and cheery eyed when we are waking up and you know they're bringing us like all we're the bright news. and cheery right now i know but it's 10 it's not five <laughs> when they do it you know what i mean okay um <clears throat> All right. Well, we've been talking about uh, about game of the week, we have. game you know games of the week. Yes. Uh, and and high school sports. We cover a lot of high yeah. school sports here in Frankfurt. We do uh, we do football. We do basketball. We do baseball and softball. We do volleyball. volleyball. Um, I guess that is that. But then they're also my kids started track soccer. yesterday. We, we do soccer. I mean, know? we cover a lot of stuff, but there's more sports than what we cover, just because yeah. some sports are just not conducive to TV coverage. Right. As you can see, sometimes when you're watching the Olympics, you know, but it takes a lot, you know, I mean, like to do like a, you know, to cover yeah. the luge, you need yeah. a lot of cameras and people and stuff. Um, so our question of the day today is, uh, what is your favorite high school sport? Maybe it was one that you played. I, yeah. Maybe it's one that you wish you played. Or maybe, maybe it's you, one that you just like to watch. Right. And um, 
because I do think like sometimes you get into, uh, you know, like lacrosse is a thing that the people are getting, you know, that is, I feel lacrosse. like it's more of a recent. My niece was huge in field hockey. Yeah. Field hockey, you yeah. know, different areas of the country too. Right. I mean, yeah. obviously there's, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. you're going to see skiing teams and, and yeah. more winter type stuff. Well, sure they um, got swim teams now. Swim team, yeah. They've got, uh, I think Franklin County has like a bass fishing team. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so uh, there's just all kinds of stuff. We had a big, uh, we had a bowling team at my high school. Really? Because there was a bowling alley like a couple blocks away, yeah. and they used to, you know. Okay, archery's know. big now. Too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So let us know, and, and you know, maybe you can brag on somebody if you want, or talk about how you know your glory days of the past. Did you play any sports at Frankfurt High? <laughs> I don't have any glory days? I won't say that I actually played. I was on some teams. Like okay. I, put, I was. Did on you letter? If you lettered, then you pl- then you played. Okay. Well, I was on the inaugural soccer team for Frankfurt High School. Okay. Which was co-ed. I mean, <laughs> it was the first time that uh-huh. uh, the high school had had a soccer team, and I was a freshman. I was okay. like, I'll do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like on the team as a player the first year, and we all got these really cool letters, the mm. F, and yeah. then it said like first year or whatever. Nice. So I love that. Yeah. But then after that, I was like, mm, I love soccer, but I'm just not the player. So mm. I ended up being the statistician for the rest of my three years. Oh, well, that's good. You yeah. did that. You were part yeah. of the team. But you totally. were definitely, yeah. So totally. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't play. I played like my, my, my glory days of sport, like led up right to the start of high school. Yeah. And then things got way more serious and I wasn't. Yeah. Good enough. Well, and it was an, I went to a really big high school too, so like they were all really good. Well, I think that's the thing too. It's like I I love soccer and I mm-hmm. love to play and kick and yeah. do, try to do tricks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I love for my kid to play because then I can try to show her what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, when it comes to like competition mm-hmm. and it, it's your school and like you want to win, you don't want to be the person that's like <laughs> not good or the reason why you lost or it's mm. a lot of pressure it's like yeah. like you know kickers on a football team just the it's the one person doing it. i'm like oh my gosh that's a lot of pressure i know yeah not so. everybody can be like you know cannon leg uh for the Bengals. It just yeah. has ice through his veins you know going out there kicking um, i like doing stuff i like doing things for fun though my sister and i were on an indoor soccer league uh, oh yeah that's one a, year that's a and sport. i mean yeah. that's fast yeah but it is fast and we were horrible but we had so much fun <laughs> <laughs> Would you have played curling if curling was a uh, a sport that was available? Uh, no, I'm not good on ice. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've got the uh, you know I mean I'm, I'm f- I've got the fitness level for yeah. curling. And you can do that squat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody gets excited about that every, yeah. every few years. Um, I you know it's funny when I was we played uh, flag football in yeah. grade school. That was our thing that we did, and and then my mom I remember saying I wish all football was flag football, and I'm like mom that's ridiculous. Yeah. But now I'm like, maybe we probably, she was probably right. Yeah. We <laughs> We'd did. Be better off. If there was were. always like an annual flag football game for like the girls. Mm. Except back then, I don't know, they still, they called it powder puff football. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that, I don't know. <laughs> but honestly though, full, like flag football is really, especially yeah. like, you know, I mean, it's fun to watch. It's fast. And, yeah. you know, and so it's really more about speed and, and, you know, right. being able to avoid people than it is yeah. about, you Just know, hitting, knocking people and, around. Right. So, we have stuff to do today. I guess we should move on. Should we? I, we can just talk about this. Well, I like to, I like to, you know, fill a little bit to give folks the opportunity yeah. to come in and, you know. Well, we have all kinds of comments. comments. Okay. Well, then let's do that. Okay, Scott Stafford. My first job out of UK. I had. Uh, oh, this is about the waking up early. Okay. I had to be at WLEX at four a.m. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you're waking up at three or three thirty. It was flipping miserable. Yeah. And I was renting a room in a haunted house. <laughs> It was just awful all the way around. Yeah. That was not a good period for Scott Stafford. No, clearly not. I do. And so I remember when I was working in radio that there were, not every day, but sometimes I would have to be there at six for the, yeah. for the Don Imus show. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. Imus, I had to get on to get, be there in time to get Imus on. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that just meant like waking up at 530 and I was just like, that. Oh. I mean, I think I was late a couple of times. Yeah. It was not pretty, but. Yeah. Well, when you have a good job that you're going to, it's good. <laughs> That's I remember true. there used yeah. to, every year, um, even when I wasn't working there, my sister worked at a television station in Louisville, WKPC. And when we covered the Derby, we would do the week before the Derby. We did all kinds of events, but every morning we did live Dawn at the Downs. Okay. So we had to be at the track at like four o'clock. Mm. 
and then and we'd go but we'd go have breakfast at the backside yeah. track yeah, yeah. and then you do the whole thing and like i know scott has talked about when you're at the track and then you but it's so like foggy because it's so right. early and stuff and you can hear the horses coming before yeah. you see them it's just amazing no, and so that was some, always fun and there is something awesome about like being out there before people are up and it's just yeah. so quiet and there's no traffic and yeah just, you know what i mean it's yeah it's nice i like it um, all right Andy Krause says, uh, hello, I normally can't get on due to work, but took the day off. Oh, so hi, I took the Andy. day off to watch a- around 10. So well, you know. didn't have to do that just for us, Andy, but we appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, well, I'll tell you what, Andy, as I did, I, I say I could get up early and I could, if mm-hmm. that was like my routine, uh-huh. but I would be late every day, but okay. I would still, if I had to be there at three, I'd probably be there at 320. Okay. <laughs> David Columbia says, I think you should add favorite high school sports movie as part mm. of this question of the day. Oh man. Okay. Well, that's, I feel like that's a big, I mean, that should really be its own thing, but there are so many great ones. Yeah. You, I mean, Hoosiers. I can't, I mean, I can't even. Hoosiers, Remember the Titans. Oh yeah. Wildcats. Are those high school or college? Those are all high school. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Well, if you want to tell us your favorite high school sports movie, that's fine too. Leslie says she likes all of them, obviously field hockey now, because that was. Why is that obviously? Well, because Kate played oh, okay. and then even played in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know that. Uh, uh, David Hecker says that while he loves watching high school basketball, his new favorite is volleyball. And that uh, volleyball is really fun to watch, I think. Yeah. You know, we talked about when the UK uh, women were, were going through and yeah. won the title last year and yeah. how much fun that was. And it is, uh, I always enjoy watching volleyball during the Olympics and really any time of the year. It's yeah. Fun. It's fun. Um, the beach volleyball. Well, I mean that's fine. No, <laughs> that that's different. That's a different game because just two on two, two and so yeah. it really is like they're oh, covering yeah. everything. But just the the speed of the full team. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Kathy Jennings ran track and played basketball in high school, but not all four years. I always love the basketball game. So exciting to watch in person. Okay. Uh, and Leslie's laughing at me for saying I'm not good on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Quote: I'm not good on ice. Yeah, well, that was clearly yes. <laughs> Andy uh, says I was never a sports fan. The only ones. I played was the ones they made us play as a whole for our grade. Mm-hmm. I think it was volleyball. Uh, one that I did like growing up in the neighborhood with our friends was kickball. Oh, Me too. I loved kickball. Yes. So much fun. We did the, we played it in the street. Yeah. And then you had to go car and then everybody <laughs> go off to the side. But that was a big thing at Second Street when we used to have, uh, where the where the gym is now at Second Street, that yep. used to be a whole playground, concrete mm-hmm. playground. Mm-hmm. And we played kickball there every morning. And that was the thing. You got there at like 7 o'clock to play kickball wow. before school. You get up, uh, you, you roll the red the red bouncy rubber ball, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. We used to play sometimes indoors in the gym. And yeah. so then you'd like, you'd have to play it off the wall. You know, oh, they yeah. Kick it hard and then yeah. deep off the wall, you have to get it. And if you... If you caught it off the wall, it was still, it was a catch. It was an out. That's how we played it. Um, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, Lena Columbia says her favorite high school sport movie, uh, ha- favorite high school sport is basketball. Favorite movie is Hoosiers. And I'm, I'm good on both of those. Yeah. Love Hoosiers. Like it. So much fun. Um, and David, was David Hecker. Was Inaugural FHS soccer team. It was uh, 1984. Huh? It was my freshman year. 83, nice. 84. Um, Andy said that uh, when he was a bookkeeper, he had to be there at five. So he got up at three. Occasionally, I had to be there at four. I had to get up at two. I mean, it's like a, a, what? So at some point, it becomes you're just staying up uh, to work, yeah. not waking up early. Exactly. <laughs> Leslie Smith. Well, I was a band kid in high school, but I like football season the best. And I was also in band with okay. Leslie. Okay. <laughs> and football. Yeah, when you're in that the band, fun. football's fun, right? And yeah. basketball too, but football is, yeah. you know, because you get out and you do the. You we know. learned our formations and right. the marching and the routines, and mm. we ha- we did have fun. Um, Ariel ran cross country and track at Bowling Green High. Nice. She's going through her personal records here. Oh. Her personal record was a 1920 uh, 5K for, for, for cross, count, oh. cross country. Uh, in track, she ran the 4x8, uh, the 1600, and the 4x400, which is, uh, man, personal record for the 1600 was 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Maybe we need to get some because your daughter's into cross country. Maybe you need to get Ariel and and and, and well, Ella she needs together. some motivation. Yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Ariel, I'm looking you up later. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and then uh, and David David echoes the Hoosier. Uh, David Hecker echoes yeah. the Hoosiers is the best movie. He says the um, Frank for High Boys and Girls doubleheader was going to be at the Ho- Hoosier Gym a few years ago, but the games got canceled. Oh, huh. 
nice. was going to play a game there. Yeah, at the uh, what's the name of that that high school? It is. It's not Hickory High. Is the name of the school in the in the movie? Yeah. The actual high school is is not called that, but I, but it is. I mean, it was a real. Uh, Milan, is it Milan High School? I think I don't know. it was based on a true story about a li- you know a little school, and that's the thing about Indiana basketball. Same with Kentucky high school basketball is that there are no uh, no classes. There's yeah. no little schools play little schools, big schools big play big schools. When you go to the Sweet Sixteen, it's everybody, right? And so that's you end Super. up with these little schools having a chance to be, knock off the big school. Gotcha. Milan, Indiana. Milan, Indiana. Well. Yeah. So, yeah, I, was, I got it. That's uh, good. Okay. No, yeah. thanks, Steve. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, okay. Um, well, if you want to hop in, we'll keep it's the conversation. We we'll, gotta get moving. We'll keep the conversation going. <laughs> we kept talking about all the news we have to cover, and we haven't. I know. We do yet. have a lot of I news. Apologize, uh, but we'll we'll get back to the question today. If you want to hop in, tell us what your favorite high school all sport right. is. Just cancel everything else on cable ten today. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going. We're, we're locked going. in. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, oh, well, we have basketball tonight. We do. Yeah, we'll have to be done by then. Okay. Um, all right. It's uh, it's Black History Month, Kathy. Okay. We've been doing it uh, all month long. We have. Uh, we've got a few more episodes, I guess, to do it. We won't. This will be our last one together. It is. Because yeah. uh, next Wednesday will be, will be March. Um, but every, every February, the U.S. honors the contributions and sacrifices of African Americans who have helped shape the nation. Black History Month celebrates the rich cultural heritage, triumphs, and adversities that are an indelible part of our country's history. Yep. And Kathy, who yes. are we spotlighting today? Well, today we're, we're, we're talking about a legendary, mm. um, iconic figure, and that's Dred Scott. Uh, he was a slave and social activist who served several masters before suing for his freedom, and his case made it to the Supreme Court prior to the American Civil War. So he was born into slavery sometime in 1795 in Southampton County, Virginia. And after his first owner died, Scott spent some time in two free states working for several subsequent owners. He then made history by launching a legal battle to gain his freedom after his attempt to buy buy his freedom was denied in 1846. He lost his initial suit in a local St. Louis district court, but he won uh, in a second trial, only to have that decision overturned by the Missouri State Supreme Court. Uh, on March 6, 1857, the Supreme Court decision in Dred Scott versus Sanford was issued. Slaves were not citizens of the United States and therefore had no rights to sue in federal courts. Eventually, the 13th and 14th Amendments to the Constitution overrode this Supreme Court ruling. Um, Both Dred Scott and his wife Harriet were granted freedom in May of 1857. Scott and his family stayed in St. Louis after his emancipation, and he found work as a porter in a local hotel. Sadly, after a year of true freedom, Scott died from tuberculosis on September 17, 1858. Scott is buried in Calvary Cemetery in St. Louis, um, putting pennies displaying the face of President Lincoln on Scott's headstone has become a local tradition over the decades. The commemorative marker next to his headstone reads, In memory of a simple man who wanted to be free. In 1997, Scott and his wife Harriet were admitted to the St. Louis Walk of Fame. Um, I think, you know, you talked about the Supreme Court case, which is, you know, famous. And it's amazing how many of those cases, like, you think of them as being these sort of landmark cases. And it's not like they got it wrong. They got, I mean, obviously, they got the ruling right. But it's like yeah. it doesn't necessarily go in the person's favor. Right. And it's like, but that forces other things to happen right you know what i mean and so yeah. it's not always the supreme court decision but it's like once you reach that level it's, it's a catalyst like, right yeah so um that, that that has been the case a lot through the history you know those kind of things so. yeah but this is obviously a super important one but um uh, so that yeah dred scott is uh our that's spotlight. a good that's a good one. well they're all good but yeah that uh, was kind of like just the mm-hmm. <laughs> um okay Kathy, yes. Are we can we're now halfway into the show. Is it time to get to headlines? We better. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Headlines. This is this at eight o'clock last night. This was breaking news. Well, we uh, broke the news. Was it last? Was it last week that we broke the, the last postponement? It was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we broke the postponement Wednesday, right yeah. out on the show. Basically. Yes. Okay. So here I we're mean, doing it again. It's like we were trying to get it confirmed. It wasn't even right. confirmed yet. Yeah. And then we got it confirmed during the show. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, but this came out last night around 8. 
uh, that the public hearing regarding City Commissioner Kyle Thompson's alleged misconduct was originally scheduled for this afternoon at 1 p.m. at Thornhill Education Center. Uh, the city sent out a notice last night around 8 uh, that the special meeting uh, will not take place as scheduled due to related litigation filed against the city this afternoon. So this is just all happening. Mm-hmm. And ripped, this is the statement this is, of the city. This is, this is ripped from the headlines. All right. Well, and this is their statement. This isn't your opinion yeah. on the thing. Right. Sorry. Yeah. The city of Frankfurt looks forward to the opportunity to respond to the filed complaint and motion for injunctive relief. Hmm. Injunctive relief. I feel like that's... Somebody needs to look that up. Well, I mean, I think generally, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I, I play one um, TV sometimes, but... You know, I mean, that would make me think that somebody was filing to get an injunction, to, okay. which basically means to stop. To like, from, oh, hold, stop the presses. Right. And so. Put on the brakes. The city is saying that maybe that, you know, they want to respond to that. They need think time. That there shouldn't be an injunction filed. I got you. Know, you. Or, or granted. So, but we don't know. Right. What, what the, I mean, what the, what the, I don't know if there's actually been a case filed or if there's just a threat of a case, you know. Um, so we'll, I'm sure, learn more yeah. about it in coming days. Yeah. So. So um, what else? The uh, oh, but by the way, we'll keep you posted if there's something is actually scheduled for this. Yes. at some point. Yeah, and like we mentioned, the you know the original hearing was scheduled and then was postponed yeah. after uh, after Commissioner Thompson's uh, lawyer requested a continuance. Yeah. Um, okay, more news. Lots of and this is more follow up type stuff. We talked about the uh, the big park meeting that was uh, there was a lot happening at that meeting. A lot happening. People uh, all riled up. Everybody Ooh. was, you know, ha- had their opinions about it. Yep. Um, so the park committee, which is uh, which is made up of three, well, I guess of the of the uh, county judge and two members of the fiscal court. Scotty Tracy, Mike Muller. Yep. The three of them are on the the park committee. They voted to send the master plan uh, for Lake View Park to fisc- to the full fiscal court for consideration. So at its Monday meeting, the uh, the committee unanimously approved sending the unchanged Lakeview Park master plan to the fiscal court. Uh, after a fraught and disruptive public hearing uh, at the Paul Sawyer Public Library on February 7th, which featured impassioned pleas for an indoor water facility, tennis courts, and better golf facilities, all three Franklin County fiscal court members, um, Judge Executive Wells and Magistrates uh, Mueller, Mueller? Mueller. Mueller. Mueller and Tracy voted to put the master plan on the court's March 3rd agenda. The court will vote on whether or not to approve and accept it. Uh, the Lakeview Park Master Plan will be voted on at the next Franklin County Fiscal Court meeting on March 3rd at 5 p.m. So that'll be a big, big meeting. So that's next week. That is, yeah. So we'll um, we thank the uh, State Journal for, for their reporting on that. And yes, information totally. About uh, what's what's going on with that. So um, I did I encourage you guys, you know, if you, if you have access to read the, the article, because it is interesting to hear the magistrates and the and the judge sort of give their explanations about right. why they thought that people were so impassioned, you yeah. know, and also why they had made some changes to the plan and sort of have gone back to the original plan that yeah. they had. So uh, I'm sure there'll be more discuss. I'm sure a lot of discussion sure at the fiscal court about this moving forward on March 3rd. So uh, keep an eye out for that. All right, moving on. We have uh, we have sad news Fair that news. we want to share. Yeah. Um, uh, the Frankfurt community lost someone special over the weekend. Um, Access Soup Kitchen and Men's Shelter Executive Director James Barnett passed away on Sunday. And he was a friend of the show. We'd had him here in the studio uh, and talked to us about things they had going on at Access. But he was also a fixture in the community and a tireless advocate for our most vulnerable citizens. Uh, he worked at Access since 2012 and became the executive director in 2018 and devoted everything to his work. Um, an Access board member said that Barnett had once lived at the shelter himself, so he had a special understanding of the place and those it serves. He will be greatly missed not only by his wife, Judy, uh, but also two stepsons and five grandchildren, but also by the entire community. And I agree he was again he was a presence when he came in here he just had so much to talk about and he really supported the work there at access you and i had the opportunity to go down there um a couple years ago at christmas and serve food and he was just on it yep uh so uh the visitation is going to be wednesday from five to seven at rogers funeral home and those who attend are asked to wear a mask um 
yeah, the community, I mean, the soup kitchen, especially in the community as a whole, will we'll certainly miss uh, James Barnett and uh, we thank him for all his, his service. We thank the State Journal again for the for their great reporting on that and, yeah. and getting those quotes from the folks that, that knew him uh, and worked with him the most. So, all right. Well, um, let's get back into uh, into our community calendar, Kathy. Okay. That's like big. <laughs> all right. Because we got big news. We do. It's Game of the Week District Tournament. We've been talking about it uh, all week. It's happening. It's underway. It's a newly remodeled uh, F.D. Wilkinson Gymnasium um, down there on Ewing Street. You can park in, in Kathy's front yard. She's serving, uh, I think, hot meals and yeah. um, margaritas, tacos and margaritas. Or that tacos was just last and margaritas. Night. That was just last night. Okay. <laughs> uh, the girls' side uh, kicked off last night as the Franklin County Lady Flyers beat the Western Hills Lady Wolverines 77-17. to 17. Man, Lady Flyers, just, they're tough. Uh, there There's, you see the bracket oh, yeah. as it stands today. So the, the, the Lady Flyers advancing to the finals, which will – which which uh, guarantees them a place in the in the regional tournament. Um, and they'll play the winner of Great Crossing and Frankfurt High, who play tonight at 6 o'clock. Okay. So the two, whoever wins that game tonight will also join Franklin County in the, uh, in the regional tournament, but then the winner obviously gets the, uh, gets the bigger trophy and gets to do the district title. Well, yeah, because they're title. champs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in boys' action, after defeating Frankfurt Christian Academy, 83-76 to in the play-in game Monday night, Frankfurt High boys fell to Great Crossing last night, uh, 62 to 38. Mm. Uh, Great Cross, mo- uh, Great Crossing moves on to play the winner of the Western Hills and Franklin County game tonight at eight. So uh, that'll be that was a good a good game, uh, a couple good games this year between those two teams. So mm-hmm. That'll be good, and the winner obviously will move on to to the regional tournament, which is what everybody works towards to get that chance to play in uh, in the regional. So. Uh, that is tonight at eight o'clock. So two big games tonight to, to get games. into the finals. Are you working the game tonight? Uh, I am not. Oh, okay. We have plans. Oh, okay. I'm a very full social calendar. I uh, know you're so busy. Um, and uh, so as you, just a reminder, the entire tournament will be available on Cable Ten, also on the Plant Board's Facebook page and the Cable Ten YouTube channel, and we'll tell you all about those places at the end of the show if you don't if you're not already subscribed and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, uh, so check that out. And then we'll have the finals are tomorrow, right? Finals are tomorrow, I think. Was it tomorrow Thursday? <laughs> tomorrow is Thursday, yes. I, I thought they were Friday. Are they Friday? I think, you know what? I don't know. Somebody <laughs> tell me if you can. <laughs> Move on. Maybe but we we'll know see it on uh, coming up on Cable 10. Oh. We'll get to it. Oh. <laughs> That's called a tease, folks. We'll let you know. So as soon stay as we tuned. Find, <laughs> as soon as we find out, <laughs> later tease. on in the show, we'll tell you. Um, Okay, Kathy, you you threw this out. You know, we've we've done this on occasion yes. uh, on this show to let folks know about uh, employment opportunities around town. Who is hiring? Who's hiring? And this is important. Okay. Uh, because again, it was we're, we're hitting spring and the summer's around the corner. There are people who are looking for uh, new opportunities, and then especially um, internships. So Josephine Sculpture Park is hiring interns. Uh, applications are open for artist and conservation and outreach internships. Uh, The deadline to apply is February 27th, so get on it, y'all. JSP is seeking a conservation and outreach intern to help us manage habitat, maintain park grounds, and conduct community outreach and environmental education programs. Um, These programs promote uh, JSP's mission to connect people with each other and the land through the arts. Um, If interested in uh, an intern... Applicants may design and implement their own program or project. The intern will also work with art studio interns to maintain park grounds and assist with events. The internship is 20 hours per week from mid-May to mid-August. So if you are interested in that or just want to know more about it, you can go to josephinesculpturepark.org. Cool. That sounds like a great opportunity for somebody that's into that. Or anybody, really. Um, Also, Paul Sawyer Public Library is hiring a full-time youth services outreach specialist. They're responsible for assisting in meeting the goals of the youth services department. They'll develop and implement new and existing services that meet the needs of the community, work extensively with the public and staff members. Interested candidates should submit a cover letter, employment application, and resume 
All documents can be submitted via email to hr at pspl.org, or you can ma- mail them to the library down on Wapping Street. Go to pspl.org for more info. And that is a, I mean, I'm a little biased as somebody with little kids, but youth programs in, in libraries are just so important. They and, are. I know, mean, and I tell you, Paul Sawyer's pretty good at it. Yeah. <laughs> they and, have so many opportunities for kids to come and do stuff. Uh, you know, just and just the basics, you know, summer reading program stuff like that, but right. then multiple things beyond that. Yeah, so many opportunities, and yeah. so really, yeah, you can get really creative and do cool things there. So uh, hopefully, they can find somebody that really, yeah, fits fits their their needs. There. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, okay, Kathy. Yep. Uh, what, what color are the streetlights this week? Uh, well, <laughs> they're purple. Some of them. Some are of them are purple. Now. Oh. Can oh, I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I just got really excited because I remember. So we we went to, to Charlotte, North Carolina yeah. this past weekend. We were driving down uh, I-85, I don't know, right in the town. And yeah. I saw, saw some purple streetlights it's on the side y'all. of the road. And I was like, I know what that is. I know uh, they must have gotten the same like lights that. that we got. <laughs> so it's not just here in Frankfurt. Yeah. We the, the plant board hasn't made like some decision that we're having purple streetlights now. <laughs> it ha- It is a manufacturing faux pas. Mm. Uh the sealant that they use during manufacturing for the, their LED chips uh, have failed, and they've let the moisture uh, into the chip, mm. and when that happens, the light turns purple. Mm. So although some of us like them, mm. um, they're just, it's not how they're supposed to be. Right. So we're asking folks to report those purple lights to Wanda McDonald at 352-4412, or you can email Wanda at wfmcdonald at fewpb.com. And you just provide the street address. But then also, here's a little extra. All those polls have numbers on them. If you mm. happen to get the number off the poll, mm. report that. That'd be helpful. That's perfect. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I will tell you, you know, I've, I've heard people say, oh, I like them, you know, we should keep them. And then other people just complain. Mm-hmm. My husband is like, I don't care. I just want them all to be the same. Oh. <laughs> I like that. His OCD is like, oh, yeah. no. All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's no no danger. There's yeah. no, do you know what I mean? No. We just we just, just we want to replace them. We yeah. have the opportunity to replace them, and if you could let us know, because there are a lot of lights out there. Yes. Um, okay. Well, uh, we've got an update on COVID. We, we'll check back in with Facebook. Yeah. We'll, we'll let you know when the when the basketball games are. I cheat. I cheated and looked ahead. I okay, know the answer, but we'll let you know right after this. In today's fast-paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. Buying and selling a home can be an extremely stressful experience. Let real estate agent Reva Howe help you navigate the process smoothly and help relieve your anxiety. Reva is honest and excellent communicator and will be your advocate every step of the way. Reva provides expert advice and will treat you like family. At Exit Realty Crutcher, real estate is what we do and families are why we do it. Contact Reva today by texting Reva to 85377. Call her at 502-330-8831. You'll be glad you did. All right, we're back out of here. Oh, I'm good. sorry, did I interrupt you? I'm just reading I'm, our oh, comments. Oh, am I supposed to count you back? You never do, I so never I just do. I well, start I s- playing games or whatever. <laughs> no, I was reading our Facebook comments. Yeah, you said we got we had a few. So, uh, <laughs> so David Hecker uh, clarified that that Milan was the high school, but the gym is in Knightstown, located oh. near Indianapolis. Gotcha. Where they actually of filmed course, the David Hecker the, uh, the movie. All right, uh, Stephanie Elaine always loved football. And she wants to know if Waterboy counts as a favorite high school sports movie. I think Waterboy was college, though. Eh, that's all right. I'm pretty sure that I know it was a that's fictional college, but I'm pretty sure he played in college. Yeah. Um, Andy Krause said we're, that we're fun. We are fun. Uh, I'm yeah, glad we that, are. I'm just glad somebody <laughs> else can recognize that. <laughs> um, what, what was what's Leslie Smith's favorite? She says my favorite high school sports activity was homecoming week and dressing up each day. Can I can I just say a little bit about that? Uh-huh. So for homecoming week it was like spirit week, and so for every day, there was you know you dressed a certain way or you had a you know a certain thing that you did, and 
Um, it was always fun. I mean, maybe it's like old timey. I mean, they do it now, but it's maybe not cool to participate. I don't know. Or maybe mm. that's just my kid. Mm. Uh, but I loved it. And I, yeah, I loved participating in all the different dress up spirit days too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Andy Krauss thought that uh, some people thought maybe they were bug lights, the purple lights. Oh, I mean, that well, cool. that, Hey, you know, that would be dual double chicken money if they were <laughs> to get the light <laughs> the, and controlling. The, yeah. Uh, right. Insect. Okay. Uh, Josh Stamper said the state basketball tournament. That's his favorite. Oh, a lot and of people like to do that. It is great. Yeah. I mean, again, like we said, it's all the classes. It's every, you get every, you get schools out in far Eastern. And that's the other thing, great thing oh, about yeah. Kentucky is that like geographically. Everybody just converges. It's so diverse, yeah. right? Because you have, you know, far West, far East. It's just like, those are like almost two different worlds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of types of, of folks. And so it's just cool to get them all together in one place and just play. It's fun. Yeah. Steve S. Remember the Titans. Okay. Remember the Titans. That's his high school. Was yeah. that high school? Right. It yeah. was. Yeah, it was high school. Okay. You already asked me that. I oh, I did. Yeah. Well, I'm still questioning okay. it. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're running out of time, Kathy. We gotta oh, get. Gosh. We gotta. Uh, let's give. Let's give folks a COVID update. Okay. All right. We've seen. Uh, we've seen some numbers drop, which is welcome news. Uh, granted, they're still pretty high because they were really high before, but they are down. We were in record number territory. Yep. Uh, Franklin County has seen a significant drop in COVID cases in the past week, but February is still one for the record books. Even with the decrease in numbers, Franklin County has had 1,310 COVID cases in February, second only to January of 2022 for the most cases in one month. There were 3,682 cases in January. Uh, and for the fourth straight week, COVID cases continued to drop in, uh, in Kentucky as we uh, come out of uh, Omicron. Governor Bashir said in his press conference on Monday, uh, he reported 969 new cases for Monday, the lowest count posted in nearly two months, which is great. Uh, 3,564 cases reported on Saturday and, and just a few less on Sunday. Uh, the quote from the governor is, we're heading in the right direction. It looks like we may be able to have a good spring and summer, and we mm -hmm. certainly hope it holds for longer than that. Uh, but try to be patient just in the next couple of weeks to where you don't end up with COVID and we don't end up with things like schools that can't be open for a couple of days because we just weren't patient enough for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And that is something important to remember. I feel like we kind of jumped the gun. I don't remember when, if that was last spring or summer we're like we're just so ready to get out like, of it okay. and we're like the news it's good and then it's like whoa whoa <laughs> so just that uh, just hang tight it feels like we're really close to things being yeah uh really good um kathy tell folks about vaccines okay still well in order to kind of keep things on the right track okay. uh covid19 vaccines are available at the health department and they're they offer them all uh, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and uh, you can call 564-7647 or visit fchd.org to schedule an appointment for a vaccine. But that's not the only place you can get one. You can go to just a myriad of uh, pharmacies, CVS, Walgreens, Little Clinic at Kroger, uh, and they have the uh, vaccine available daily with little to no wait time. You just go and, and tell them you want one. If you don't have any idea where to go, you can go to vaccines.gov slash search and uh, find available vaccines in your area. Just put in our area code. Okay. Um, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7 to 9 a.m., the health department is offering free COVID testing, and that's at uh, the Public Health Center there on the East-West Connector. You don't even have to register. Uh, uh, you can just drive through, and you could get your results within 24 hours. Uh, and they'll send it to you via email. And then down at 2nd Street, they're also offering COVID testing on Mondays from 3.30 to 6. And that's another drive through Okay. Um, let's talk about what's coming up on Cable 10. <laughs> All right. Like we mentioned before, we've got two big games tonight in the in the 41st District Tournament. Or is it? I don't think it actually is the 41st District. Is it the 41st? Oh, my gosh. I need to know these things before I just say them out loud. The District Tournament. Yes. Two big games tonight. Six and eight, we got the girls, Great Crossing against Frankfurt High, and at eight, the boys, Western Hills against Franklin County. Um, that's tonight. Tomorrow at five o'clock, we'll have Global Connections, and then again at 5.30 with uh, Bill Miller, and then uh, Optimus Club at six, and the Qantas Club at seven, and then Friday, Kathy, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock, live around 10 with me and Zach. Oh, fun. That'll be fun. 
And then uh, Game of the Week District Championships are Friday night, 6 o'clock. We'll have the winner of tonight's girls' game against Franklin County. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll have the winner of tonight's boys' game against Great Crossing. So those will be some good games for the district title. Excellent. On Friday. <laughs> so check it out. Um, okay. Well, it's Kathy, a big week around here for Capleton. It is. They got, we've got a lot going on. Yeah. Are you helping out? I have a surprise for them tonight. Oh, I am helping out. Yeah, after you get done with the tacos and the and the margaritas, yeah. you're gonna bring them down. <laughs> after after my shift in my driveway, <laughs> then I'm gonna head down to the gym. All right. Um, well, thanks everybody for watching and for participating. We had we had a good fun question of the day and, and good time interacting with everybody. We did. Today. We always love uh, interaction with our. Uh, with our viewers, and I will say, Steve Vest, mm. he said, I misunderstood and thought it was best costume, so I showed up as Satan on Favorite Character Day. And I guess he's talking about during Spirit Week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Steve Vest, something else. He is. Uh, Titans wore high school football and several went on to play in college. Okay. That was right. When in doubt. Okay. Do, 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 do. I think we're, we're done. Good. All right. We're good. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> I want to make sure we got everybody in yeah, because we love when they participate. We want to make sure they're heard. Okay. Are, we, are you done now? I guess. All right. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at FPB Cable 10, on the Facebook Cable 10 KY, or the main plant board page, FEWPB, and uh, on YouTube, uh, the Cable 10 page on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you know when we go live, like tonight with the basketball games. And if you have any questions or comments or just want to let us know how we're doing, give us an email at cable10 at fewpb.com. Kathy. Yes. Thanks for hanging out. No, thank you I for had showing fun. up. What <laughs> I got here? I got here. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. We'll be back on Friday, or I'll be back on Friday with Zach. Yeah. And remember, if it happens around town, it's right here on Around 10. Round 10 is brought to you by the Frankfurt Plant Board with support from Exit Realty Crutcher Agents Tim and Rebecca Hubbard. Real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. And Agent Reba Howe, navigating today's real estate market to serve your needs.